So let's talk a little bit about the mathematics behind this method that we just described using the spring. So first is one uh, integral identity shown here. So say we take a volume integral. So here's my material. It has volume omega. It has a boundary gamma. There's a unit normal pointing outward on the surface. And let's say we have some variable u and we're taking this variation on, on v, but you can consider this whole thing as, as some function. And so what we're interested in is the gradient of this function over the whole volume. So you can show that this volume integral is equal to a surface integral where we, again, take that function u variation in nu times the unit normal over its surface integrated over the entire surface I define as gamma and these are equivalent. So it's often the case where we want to correlate things on the surface where we know them with what happens inside the uh, inside the volume. So going from here to the next step I've just applied the product rule so we can divide up this or propagate this derivative or Really what we're doing is we apply the derivative on the variation in nu. So you can consider this whole thing, this is a function. And then we also have to apply the derivative on u. I've just pulled it to the other side over here. And then we carry down the integral on the surface here. So th this form gets used extensively in all, all that we do with variational methods. And so I give an example here coming back to the rod we have force displacement we have energy we could think of this as energy um, there's cases where we're interested in the gradients of displacement this is a measure of strain so this will come up a lot in the mechanics we discuss but here I'm, I'm really just applying this uh, identity here in this particular case, it's 1D, so we don't have to go over a volume. We just integrate over the length of the rod. We have to evaluate the endpoints. So instead of a surface, you have the endpoint at length L and at 0. And then we have the other derivative out here. Um, one important thing is that when we're looking at variational methods, these, remember, are the guesses that we take inside the body. By definition, we say that on the surface, we know that displacement. That's something that we can measure or see. So we assume that there's no variation. We know what that is. So that means that this is gone. So all we have left is the two integrals. I'll note there's a typo that should be at dx1 uh, for the coordinate in the x1 direction. So basically what we'll show in the next page is that this integral is much easier to deal with uh, and allows us to build up these equations, balance equations that we'll be solving. So let's go ahead and look at that or actually Let's, um, let's first think about the other aspect of this problem. So that was dealing with gradients in space, but what if you have changes in, let's say, speed, or changes in, um, uh, if you have a, a, a velocity that's finite. In that case, you're going to have kinetic energy, so we may have to deal with time derivatives. So you can apply the same concept in time as opposed to space. So I've just replaced my coordinates with an integral from some delta t. So this could be from some t1 to t2. Integrate over time. This whole thing is equal to some constant um, based on the, the endpoints. So again, expand this out. We have two integrals in time. We've used the product rule again on these two. And then we carry down the endpoints. All right. So let's think about combining these two effects. So we've talked about spatial derivatives. We had derivatives in space. Here it's my strain. 
this is motivated by internal strain energy, which is my stress times strain. We also have kinetic energy. I've written that in terms of density and the velocity squared. All right. A more general description is coming back to the Lagrangian density. So that's my kinetic energy minus the internal energy. And my variables here are the velocity. I've written as a dot. And also the strain derivative of displacement with respect to x. And again, I left off of x1. These are the same thing. OK. So this becomes important. We can have changes in velocity, changes in strain. These are independent variables. So we can take variations in the velocity and, in addition, variations in the strain. All right. So our variation problem is we want to vary this whole action integral. So remember, we're conserving energy. So this whole thing has to be equal to 0. And we can move this inside. So we're going to take the variation on this. So these are fixed fixed ranges of our structure. So we only have to vary this Lagrangian. So if these are independent variables, we have to understand or determine what is, how does the Lagrangian change as you change the velocity? So we're going to take guesses on that velocity. And we're also going to look at how does that Lagrangian density change when your strain changes? So I've written it here using additional notation. So my comma means derivative in x. And same thing here. This is my variation on that strain. So I'm going to divide this up. We're going to first look at um, this term, see if we can simplify this down. And then we're going to look at this term, simplify this down. And we're going to use these methods I've just talked about. Um, use the integral identities, use product rule, simplify these down. And in the end, what we're going to find is we basically will get Newton's law. We'll get a balance of forces due to internal stresses. And that has to equal your mass times acceleration. So we'll do that next time.